Welcome to week two. Welcome to the features versus benefits consideration. Now one of the big decisions that you want to make very early on when you're setting up your e-marketing projects is whether you are using the internet as a distribution platform for a product or a promotion platform for a set of fiscal goods. And this comes down to the decision of when someone buys from you, are they going to be receiving something in the physical world or are they going to be getting something that's virtual? Now this decision in the features versus benefits discussion comes about when you start thinking about what's the value? What can the product do for your end user? And this is also why I get people thinking about who their customer is really early on. Who's the audience? Who do I want viewing my content, using my product, wearing my stuff? So you can start visualizing, you can start working out, well, what can I offer them? Now, in the rolling case study that will be being used across the semester, we will examine the actual, some of the design and development processes, some of the thinking. But here, what I want you to be looking at is this idea between the notion of using the internet and media marketing to promote and sell yourself, using e-marketing to promote and sell physical goods, and using it to promote and sell something in between in the virtual product. Now, figure 4.0. Figure 1.4, the virtual product, comes up with a lot of component parts and subdivisions. But I want to show you some of the practical parts of this. So kicking off initially, this is just a case example of if you want to go get into distributing physical goods or virtual goods or virtual services over the internet using your e-marketing platform as a means to bring customers to you, so that they can access a service, a virtual good, or a physical good. This won't be about promoting yourself as yourself, won't be about selling yourself, it'll be about selling something else. You become important as the creator of that something else, but you are not the primary product. So, welcome to the internet. Here's a set of case examples. First up, a lot of these examples I knew off the top of my head because I've been around for a while. SoundCloud, Bandcamp, Fiverr, Patreon, Sellify. These are things that I've either bought from or looked at selling through. But from scratch, what I also did is I threw the term selling digital products into Google and that gave me Shopify. And it's given me a set of things to look at. So what you want to be doing each and every time you first put a call is think like a marketer. You've got top of mind recall, but you've also got search. So always be willing to search. Always be willing to go, I don't know everything I need to know. I should go have a look. From the top, let's run through the platforms. So first up, SoundCloud. For those of you who are musicians, or voice oriented, SoundCloud has a platform for distributing audio files. It also lets you link to the audio file as a direct download, as play only online, and also you can link it to a commercial uh, click here to buy now approach. So SoundCloud is platform number one, it's the audio platform. The companion audio platform that I'm recommending, again, there are more, this is just my recommendation. If you do have your own music and you are looking to use your e-marketing subject to promote your band, yourself, your musical talent, Bandcamp gives you a platform to sell. You can get, you can set up, and as it's demonstrating here, the price tags, you can sell for a range of different prices, and there are distri different distribution mechanisms in terms of how the files are dealt with. But basically, Bandcamp. If your core product is going to be the virtual good of an MP3, you can sell it here. First step. 
Staying with the intangible for a moment, Fiverr. Fiverr is a services delivery platform. So if you have a particular key service that you can provide, maybe you're an artist, graphics designer, you've got a skill set and you want to offer it for sale, Fiverr is your platform for this. There are, as you can see at the top, subcategories. So there's a whole series of different things that you can go in and examine the market that's already there. You can look at the competition. You can look at how they're promoting this themselves, what they're doing, what you want to take on, and how you're going to be going up against them. So Fiverr is a platform for service and service delivery. Patreon is a sponsor platform. It's a monthly based uh, a monthly based payment system so that your Patreon patrons and I'm going to confuse that eventually your patrons invest in you at the end of the month they are billed and you can release either monthly uh, elements you can set different pay rates you can set up a whole series of different billing approaches as you can see, there's a range of uh, different amounts per month people are making off this. It's important to consider that this is basically a platform that requires routine and regular investment of your time because it is a, it's not a charity, unless you set up a charitable donation section, it's a service. You are selling something that you do. And you'll notice here that a lot of these are either podcasts artists or regular performances so that what they're doing here is setting up a way that they can pay for serial an ongoing routine regular payment for an ongoing routine regular product distribution next across the list payloads this is one of the ones which is a straight up it's an e-commerce it's a shop front you pay a monthly fee for access in return, it will allow you to sell anything that can be downloaded. So if you are someone who's good with making templates, you make things in Photoshop, you write code, you make small movies, whatever it is you do, Payloads is your platform to sell. But Payloads is also your platform that's going to start you up with a bill. So 15 bucks US per month is what you need to clear. You need to be certain you're going to clear that in order to start here. However, you probably get a higher return because they're actually covering some of their costs up front rather than taking a share out of your payment. Next across, SlideShare. Now, technically, SlideShare isn't a sales mechanism. Uh, you can't necessarily sell your PowerPoint slides and PDFs you put up here. However, SlideShare is a hybrid point between selling documents and selling services. And they have a lot of emphasis on calls to action for consultancies or people putting up marketing and putting up content that they can then be linked through as call to actions to hire them or buy something from them. So think of it as a promotional platform. It's the YouTube for PowerPoint. Next across, if you're not familiar with DeviantArt, you probably weren't a teenager with an art streak. The DeviantArt platform is here because if you are an artist, it is one of a many, one of a number of different platforms you can use to sell. Particularly, DeviantArt is now starting to head us into the physical domain. You have prints, objects, and elements that you can physically, someone can buy and have physically shipped to them. So basically, you're now at the cusp point between, I have a digital art piece that I will now sell. Again, with this, you need to be thinking in terms of your competition, your segmentation by product offering, who are you up against, who else is in your audience and your marketplace, what are the categories, what are the genres that you're working with here, a lot of good segmentation information to be had here. Now we're moving into the print-on-demand custom build your own. 
Now, I'm a big fan of the print-on-demand approach because I basically have not had the opportunity to go out and invest a bucket of money into a set of products that I then go off and physically sell myself. Partly because the physically sell myself side is where I just don't have the time. So if you are looking at this from the point of view of you can print a bunch of t-shirt designs and set up in the market somewhere and sell them, or you can treat Zazzle and its kin, which we'll show you a few of the others, as marketplaces. Because they print on demand, they take certain amounts of cut, there's certain levels of profit sharing involved here, but they are also taking the risk of you don't have to hold stock, you can have a print on demand purchase, links to purchase, a bunch of different ways you can sell physical goods. So Zazzle has a range of products. An important thing about their approach as well is that you also have a series of templates that are designed to assist you to get the best out of their printing. So they are very supportive in that respect. However, don't use copyrighted materials in here. It has to be original. They do actually check each print run that goes through. Society6 is a, another print-on-demand service. The thing about Society6 is it leans more towards the pre-segmented and the art style. You'll note that we've got here a series of different genre categories for segmentation, styles, different approaches. Society6 is a little lighter on in terms of support. Uh, they're a little harder to use with their templates being less, uh, less well supported than Zazzle, but they are a platform that you can then link to and be discovered on. You can also buy stuff from them. Shopify. Shopify was again one of the ones that came up through Google. What I want to point out with Shopify is that again it's a paid protocol. It will give you a platform but you're basically going to need to spend money on it. So you have to work out do you have the goods, products and the infrastructure in order to make this worthwhile, worth doing. Gumroad, again another uh, creator based art approach to sell content. This is all about basically selling art, selling words. It's well supported, but once more, you have to be mindful of the fact that when it starts with pricing, that means you need to be thinking about if I'm going to do this, I'm already incurring costs, what will my revenue look like? How much am I prepared to fund this before I will turn profit? Moving from the virtual, the semi-virtual and the print-on-demand into the physical, welcome to Etsy. If you're not used to Etsy, it's worth giving it a look around. The key about Etsy is that it is not about mass produced, it is about the personalized, it's about the smaller, more custom, so you're looking at the handmade, they do have a bit of thing, a bit of a um, issue at the moment with mass produced materials making their way onto the site, however they prefer you to be using a series of more personal touch. Again, if you're an artist who works on physical objects, Etsy is a good platform for you. If you have a whole series of stuff, physical goods and shipping is your thing, eBay is your logistics champion. At the moment, the challenge with eBay for a small entrepreneur startup is that you are going to find it very difficult to be found. But this is what the rest of the social media platforms are about. You can use eBay as your shopping fulfillment and payment mechanism that will allow you to offer auctions or buy now plus preset shipping costs all handled off-site through third party. Lastly, in terms of physical, other physical objects, the print on demand. Now, print on demand is an important area where if you want to go into making things to sell, particularly on here, 
The last two categories are books on demand. So we have the lulu.com, which is about creating different types of books, print, ebook, photo book, calendar. The whole approach here is they will store the data and the printing will be done when required. There's also Blurb who does print on demand. I've used Blurb and I've been recently happy with it. What you're looking at, again though, is that you are setting up a very specific type of physical good that will be ordered and purchased that is promoted by your other platform. So, in this, what you can start thinking about now is, do I want to promote an image, a brand, and myself? Do I want to promote a physical set of goods that will be, I have in stockpile that I will then on sell? Do I want to promote a physical set of goods that will be done on demand? Do I want to promote a virtual set of goods that will be done on demand? What is the core product that I am offering? And what is the core value that my audience could get from this? And how do I best use the toolkit? How do I make some deliberate decisions to give you the best options out of the toolkit of the social media and the ways in which you can distribute an object? And this is a non-exclusive list of objects, approaches, and ways you can deal with the internet. How do I make that? How do I plan for it? How do I schedule it? And how do I use it over the course of operating my internet presence? So that's going to be your challenge. What's your platform? What's your approach? What's your, what are the features and benefits? What are people wanting? What are you wanting to create that people would want from you?